Hi guys, welcome back to Lifestyle Love. So a while ago, I made you guys a video on how to heal a broken heart. And I shared with you my practical tips and tricks that I've used personally to help me move on when I've had my heart broken. And in this video, I included things like, you know, validating your feelings, um, leaning on friends and family for support, and, you know, picking up a, a hobby or doing some charity work or a project to work on to help distract you and give you a new level of, I guess, self-love and self-confidence. But the other day I was thinking about that video and I remembered there were some other things I've done in the past um, that really helped heal my heart, but more importantly, contributed to my personal self-growth. And I thought it'd be a great idea to share these things with you. Now they say that time heals all wounds and I completely agree with that but I think there's an important factor to this comment. It's how you choose to spend that time that makes the difference. You have a choice. You can stay in the pain and the misery and wallow in that for as long as you like and it will just mean that your heart remains closed and cold. Or you can choose to move on. You can choose to heal your heart. You can choose to open your heart again. And you can, you can choose to experience a new level of awareness, um, confidence, and a greater understanding of what your, what your values are all about. And of course, by doing that, it means that you can potentially love again. So my first tip is stop the blame. Stop blaming yourself. Stop blaming the other person we all contribute towards the deterioration of a relationship. So now is the time to take ownership and responsibility for what went wrong and learn and grow from this. Now, when you're blaming someone, it means that you're still in a very angry and resentful place, but behind that emotion is simply hurt and disappointment. So it's really important that you move on from this. And this is something I personally really struggle with. But one of the techniques I've taught myself to help process this feeling of, of blame and resentment is I exercise sympathy and empathy. I feel sorry for myself and I feel sorry for that other person. And that allows me then to move to a place of forgiveness, which is a much healthier place to be in and also a lot happier place to be in. My second tip is to get a journal. Now, I've always been a very big believer in the power of connecting pen to paper. I feel like I'm a lot more present. I have a greater sense of awareness when I'm actually writing something down. My hand is connected to my heart, which is connected to the paper. It might sound silly, but for me, that works a lot more effectively than just simply tapping away at a keyboard. Now, when you have this journal, you write down all the positive experiences that you took away from that relationship. So it might be something materialistic, or it might be an experience, or it might be some sort of level of personal growth. For example, you who may have gone on some amazing holidays together where you ex had great adventures and journeys and experiences. Or that ex-partner may have given you an incredible gift that you treasure. I remember one of my ex-boyfriends gave me these beautiful antique pearl earrings and that I still wear them and I still absolutely love them and whenever I put them on I think of him fondly. Another example is I had an ex-boyfriend who taught me how to drive a manual car. And I, whilst I don't drive a manual car, occasionally I have to you know, borrow a car that is manual and I, I confidently drive away. And again, I think of my ex-boyfriend that taught me how to drive and he was so incredibly patient with me. I think of him in a very loving, caring, positive light. And my third tip, which involves using your new journal, is to write down all the lessons that you've learned from this experience. Write down everything you've learned about what you need, what you value in a relationship, what's important to you, what is non-negotiable, how you need to learn how to handle certain situations. Write down as much as you can. The more you can learn, the bigger your self-growth is going to be. And then from that, you need to make sure you put the right actions in place from those lessons. One lesson I learned from a relationship breakdown is that I need to learn how to deal with stress in a much better way, one that does not impact my relationships. When I'm stressed and overwhelmed, I get incredibly anxious, I lose my sense of fun, and I forget how to laugh. But because I've become aware of that, I catch myself and I put different actions behind it. So I learn to try and switch off, be more present in the moment, and not take my stress anxiety out on the person that I'm in a relationship with. But it's really important to put the right actions behind those lessons so that you can continue on with your growth. And my final tip is to bring the focus back to you. 
when we've had our heart broken, especially when it's really fresh and really raw and we're in the trauma of the, the relationship breakdown, it's easy to become almost obsessed with what is that person doing right now? Where are they? You know, why, have, why don't they want to be with me? And we shift all our energy towards them, which is not healthy. It doesn't contribute to our healing. So what I say is when you catch yourself in this phase or in this moment where you're doing this, bring the focus back to you. Ask yourself, where are you right now? Ask yourself, what are you feeling? Ask yourself, what are your values in a relationship? Ask yourself, what do you want your ideal relationship to look like? Ask yourself where you see yourself going in the future. Ask yourself, what are your personal goals? And ask yourself, what are things that you want to do that are going to help you feel better about yourself? And finally, if you're watching this video because you've recently had your heart broken, my heart goes out to you. And I hope that your heart heals as quickly as possible and you have the biggest and best personal growth from this experience. Having your heart broken doesn't necessarily need to be a bad thing. When we have our heart broken, it's an incredibly humbling experience. It softens us as people. And also when we do open up our heart um, to falling in love again, we're able to appreciate it so much more and treasure it and honor it on a far deeper level. So that's it for this video. If you would like me to keep on making more videos on how to heal a broken heart, just let me know in the comments box below and I'll see what I can do. If you haven't already, please make sure you subscribe and you can also follow me on Instagram and like me on Facebook. Anyway, I hope you're having a great week, guys, and I will see you next week on either Money Monday or Lifestyle Love. Ciao! <laughs>